So today is the feast of the Holy Family uh, because it's obviously within striking distance of Christmas, and the, the the gospel today is of the finding is of the is the fifth joyful mystery of the Holy Rosary, the finding of the Child Jesus in the temple when he's twelve years old, and. Today, the Feast of the Family was instituted by Leo XIII towards the end of the 1800s, that's a little over 100 years ago, let's say 120 years ago, because the modern world is tearing the family to pieces. The modern world has, ever since the outbreak of Protestantism in particular, the modern world has been making war on God. God designed the family, God wants the family, God designs human beings to come into existence inside the family. A human being needs a family to become a human being. He needs his biological mother and his biological father, and he needs his biological mother and his biological father to stick together. And if they don't stick together, or if one of them walks out of the home, uh, it, the child feels a deep injustice, and he's basically right. The child gives a lot to his parents because he's close to God. There's an innocence there which is a great joy for the parents. As long as the parents don't treat the child as a toy, but there is a great joy that comes to parents from children. And in return, the parents have to give children care and attention and a home in which to live and grow. And that's the family as God wishes it. Uh, it needs a man to be the father, and it needs a woman to be the mother. The need to say such things? Yes, because our sick, crazy, and stupid world is pretending that two fathers can do it, or two, two, two men can do it, or two women can do it. They can't. There needs to be a refuge of sinners in the family, which is the mother. And there needs to be a father who is the source of justice and reason. And that's going to be the, that, that's going to be the man. The man and the woman complement one another. The father and the mother complement one another. These things are ancient common sense. But our modern world is so clever, so technological, so scientific, so advanced, so superior to all the peasant ages that ever went before. We are no longer peasants, we are. We are superior to peasants. Ah, we are more proud, blind, and stupid than ever any peasants were. That's the state of modern man. And he thinks he, he thinks he's so wonderful. And he's deliberately washing out his common sense. You see it going on in the newspapers, the television, the via media, all the time. The universities, all of them are teaching. How man and woman are as interchangeable as the wheels on a motor car. It's absolutely false. God gives to the man a certain part to play, and he gives to the woman a certain part to play. You can best sum it up by saying the man is meant to be the head, and the woman is meant to be the heart. How can a human being exist without both head and heart? Both are absolutely necessary, but they have completely different parts to play. They complement one another. Ancient common sense and which just keeps coming out in human nature. The women keep on preferring staying at home and looking after things at home than going out to work. It's, their, it's a natural instinct. The way they're taught today, they want to go out to work and fight in the, news, in the, in the workplace just like men, and they want to fight with the men and prove they're equal and superior. Heaven help us from such women in the workplace. But if they want to push, the, if they push their way into the workplace and impose themselves, it's partly because the men don't want babies. And if they don't want babies, they don't want women to really fall. And the women are going to be frustrated. The women learn not to want babies in this crazy, sick world. But the babies are what they're for. Family is what the woman is for. The mother is for. Oh my. Oh my. There is so much ancient sense, good sense, to relearn today. However, so the church, the church instituted, Pope Leo XIII instituted this feast to make Catholics think about the part of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus in the Holy Family. And for instance, think of this, it's, it's, it's obvious. 
of, the, of these three, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, who is the highest in value and in worth? Obviously Jesus, because he's not only human being, he's also God. This, this divine person in the human nature is a divine person. He is God. He's superior to Mary and Joseph yes. by, by a long, long, long way. Infinite, because he's God and they aren't. Between Mary and Joseph, Mary is superior to Joseph because, because she is conceived immaculately and Joseph isn't. Joseph was conceived in original sin. Therefore, as to worth, it's Jesus number one, Mary number two, Joseph number three. But when, the fun, the, when we watch the Holy Family functioning, what do we see? We see Jesus obeying, Jesus who's the highest, obeying Mary and Joseph. We know that, we know that from today's Gospel. When the, when the 12 year old child goes home the scripture says that he was subject to Mary and Joseph, he was subject to his parents <coughs> he obeyed his parents God obeying two human beings two mere human beings and between Mary and Joseph it's obvious that Mary obeyed Joseph, Joseph obviously looked after him, he was a model husband but nevertheless she obeyed him she was under him, she put herself under him and she made sure that she obeyed him so of one, two, three it's order three, two, one Jesus is by far the highest and puts himself number three. Mary is well is has an outstanding privilege over Joseph of the Immaculate Conception. She puts herself under him, however, and Joseph, who's number three, is 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 the, is number one in the family. What does that tell us? It tells us a lot of things that the modern world doesn't tell us. The modern world tells us that children are the equal of their parents. And actually, the way people behave, the way parents behave today, parents are very often obeying their children, which is completely wrong. It's wrong for parents to have to say to their children, please. Parents tell their children what to do. They don't say please to their children. Think about it. it it's, it's coming in, it's here, but, but parents do not ask their children to do this or that. They tell them to do this or that. Maybe it's too late in some cases, the, the horse is out of the stable and it's no use bolting the stable door off, the horse is gone. It's, it's the way the families are running today, that the children tell the parents what to do, that's completely wrong. And then the wife behaving like the equal of the husband, telling the husband what to do, it's, it's not right. A skillful wife guides her husband, but she doesn't try to lead him. And women, God gives to the women that skill to adapt themselves to their husband, to work around their husband, and to let the, and let the husband be the head of the family. Unfortunately, today, of course, many men don't any no longer how no, don't know any longer how to be the head. It's very sad and it's very serious. And then, of course, if they if they refuse to be the head, if they refuse to give the lead, if they refuse to take responsibility, then the wife has to step in to fill the gap. And it's, it's, kind of, it's a kind of necessity. It's poor people today. People have lost, as Americans would say, people today have lost the plot. A mass of people today have lost the plot. They've forgotten how God designed the family. They've forgotten how God designed man and woman. They don't want to remember how God designed man and woman. They don't want to remember how God designed parents and children. They don't want to construct their families on the model that God gave of the Holy Family. They want to construct their families on a completely different model. And what's the result? The result is man-on-man -man marriage and woman-on-woman -woman marriage. As though that, that's what the governments are now pushing through. And that's the logical result. If, you, if, you, if the woman insists on behaving the, the equal of the man, and the man insists on not being the head, well, the man is going to unman himself, and the woman is going to unwoman herself. And if the women are no longer women, and the men are no longer manly, then why shouldn't they? Man or man, or woman or woman, because at least in that case, there's no danger of children. No danger of children. What did I just hear myself say? But that's it. We don't want children. And the birth rate's collapsing in, in, one, in all of the European nations. These supposedly leading nations of the world giving an absolutely disgraceful example to the entire world. Yes, the, the European nations should be leading, but they're not. Men should be leading, they're not. Catholics should be leading, they're not. 
the world is completely undone because the, the Catholics have lost the plot. Who is going to show the way to the rest of humanity if it's not those people, to whom, those of us, to whom God has given the faith? It's, it's, it's for Catholics to get their act together, as again, as Americans say, to get their act, pull themselves together, as English would say. The Catholics have got to pull themselves together and teach the whole world again how a family should function. Oh my, we are in great trouble. We're in great trouble. But for those that want to know how God meant the family, let them look at the example of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Leo the Thirteenth has written some very beautiful things about the Holy Family. Find, look up, look up on the internet. Perhaps his encyclical about the family. His encyclical. He's probably written more than one, but certainly one. And that's the wisdom of the church. That, and the wisdom of the church is is the way human nature was designed. If you've got a lawnmower, you buy a lawnmower, an expensive lawnmower. It's a beautiful machine. The first thing you do is study the man, the user's manual, to work out how to use it. If you use it as it's meant to be used, it's going to work wonders. If you try using it to go into town and back, you're going to wreck it. It's not designed for that. What is it designed for? How does it work? You've studied the user's manual. Ma human beings have a user's manual. It's the, it's the Ten Commandments. And the fifth <coughs> commandment is, uh, honor thy father and mother. That's, that's, of course, children towards their parents. The correlative of which is, parents look after your children. Also, husband lead your wife, wife obey your husband. That's the old-fashioned formula. You, but the modern world does not want to hear about wives obeying their husbands. Of course, that does not mean that the man may or should be a tyrant in his home. God forbid. It means that a man should look after his wife and, guide, and lead her but not smash her to pieces, or not tyrannize over her. It's, all of these things are obvious common sense. But who, who still has common sense? So the church, what we see in this feast of today, is the church in modern times trying to reinforce and protect common sense, namely the way in which God designed man, woman, and children, and the family. So we do our best. We do our best. And we think, we rethink what the modern world is so keen on. All of these things that it's pushing all the time, these crazy and sick things that it's pushing to the destruction of the family. The, 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 the delinquents that are ruling the world today are using the governments of the nations to... Dis they're putting through laws quite deliberately to destroy the family. And it's skillfully done. Because the devil is advising them, and God is allowing them, because the Catholics have disintegrated. The Catholics are not Catholic. They've disintegrated. It's a dark picture, but it's not hopeless, because St. John says, our faith is our victory of the world. If Catholics will use, will, will use the, get their faith back on its feet, and faith is not kidology, it's not self-deception, it's not illusion. Faith is my submitting, my puny, tiny little mind, which I think is so great. It isn't so great. I'm submitting my mind to great truths which God reveals, and because he reveals them, I know that they're true, and his authority, revealing his truths, like the Holy Eucharist, the real, substantial, and true presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, beneath the appearances of bread and beneath the appearances of wine, it's madness, though. That's true, because God says it's so. It, it's, it's true, the real presence, the doctrine of the real presence. I submit my mind, I obey. St. Paul calls the faith an obedience, so I obey these great truths because God tells me. That's the faith. And if I believe the things that the church believes, and if I believe what the church teaches, and I believe what, when the church says these things about the family, and says these things about man and woman, and says these things about parents and children, the church is right. The Catholic Church is right, and all these stupid, proud, idiotic, modern thinkers who try to straighten out the church or change what the church teaches, they are idiots. They're worse than idiots. They're delinquents. They're 
and in the worst of cases, they're, they're criminals because they are deliberately misleading people so that souls will fall into hell. The devil is behind it. There's a titanic battle going on for the defense of the family, abortion, the fight over abortion, the right to life, the fight over divorce, the fight as it once was over contraception. It's almost now a lost battle, the battle we've gone. My, oh my. It's difficult. The church's doctrine is not easy, but it's true. And if I want to get to heaven, I'd better obey it. I'd better obey. I can't change church, God's doctrine. I can't change the church's doctrine. The, uh, there was a very good Dominican priest, an Irish Dominican priest in London, before the, um, about the time of the Second World War, Father Vincent McMahon. He said... The big city is mortal sin. Today's big city is mortal sin. What did he mean by that? He must have meant life in, in life, live, if you live today in a big city, it's difficult to avoid mortal sin. Very difficult to avoid mortal sin. The pressure to use contraception, for instance, the pressure to use contraception is immense. Or, but God's law is God's law. You, what can I say? What can the priest say? We all of us have to control ourselves in one way or another, and that's the price of getting to heaven. If you want just to let everything go and let ourselves go, well, we're welcome to fall into hell. <coughs> but we're not welcome to fall into hell. We will fall into hell. We'll, God leaves us free. He gives us free will, and there's nothing to take away free will. But uh, I can't do what leads to hell and still get to heaven. I can't do what leads to heaven and still fall into hell. There's one path which leads to heaven and there's one path which leads to hell. Our Lord said, broad and comfortable is the road that leads to hell. Narrow and difficult the road that leads the path that leads to heaven. Few there be that go into that. Our Lord says, do we want to get to heaven or not? If we do, then we must listen to the church and we... We've got to believe what the church teaches, and we've got to believe that it's not to be changed by ourselves. <laughs> it's a beautiful doctrine, the doctrine of the family. A Catholic family is a very beautiful thing. A family which lives, which lives according to the design and plan of God, where you can see the souls of the men, the men being manly, the women being womanly, and the children being children, and having a child. Which they, if they don't have a childhood when they're children, they're going to behave like children through all the time they're adults. That's what we see today. Adults behaving like children because they never had a childhood. They weren't natural children. They're not natural adults. Poor people today. Poor, poor people. And they think they're so clever. They think they're so advanced. They think they're so superior to ages past of peasants and peasants. Patience courage, faith, hope, charity, and prayer, of course, and the family prayer, uh, the family prayer of the rosary especially. The rosary is very powerful, and God is more powerful than the devil. And the devil is very strong today, no doubt about it. He's got these governments, he's got these, these agents of Satan, he's got the media, he's got television, he's got, you name it, it's in the power of the devil today. But he's still not as strong as God. Nor is he strong as the devil. The devil has the, 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 the mother of God. The mother of God has the devil under her feet. You often see, of course, in statues, you see the serpent beneath the feet of the mother of God in statues. Because she, so if, if you and I call on the help of the mother of God, she's more powerful than the devil. But it takes faith. It takes faith and trust in God, belief, hope in God. But he, it, the, he's always there. Irish proverb. The help of God, the help of God is closer to the door. The help of God is closer than the door. The door is not far away. The door is as close as here. Well, the help of God is closer. That's true. It, it depends upon us to call on God. So whatever the poor modern world threatens us with, bullies us with, pressures us with, the help of God is closer. And it takes faith, faith, hope, and a trust in the mother of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.